Press the platoon. Ragged, worn out. <laughs> Bates, he's gung ho as ever. We lost Fisher just a few days before I left. I heard. So how's it going? Good. Lonely. Huh. Dreams. You know, I had that captured one the other night. I, I dream I'm lost in a desert. I find this beautiful green garden. It's funny. I could see it so vividly. The colors, the sparkle of the water in the pond. Well, so how's it going with the whole, you know, the, the not seeing thing? What do you think? Well, um, tough. Yeah. You want a drink? Sure. Um, can I help? No. I do fine. Listen, I brought you something. It's an article about the firefight and a description of what happened. It came out in the New York Times. Uh, it's got a description of a woman. I heard about it. Uh, I'd like to know a little more about the woman. Oh, well, I can read it to you, if you like. Thanks for the drink. Honestly, it doesn't really paint a very good picture of what we're doing there. Um, but, you know, it does describe the woman very well. Yeah, she's got quite a face. Tell me. What? Describe her. Well, um, she's got hazel eyes. She wears a shawl over her head. Um, honestly, she's just got the most intense gaze. It's, it's disarming. Is she smiling? No, she's frowning. It's suspicious. <clears throat> well, honestly, uh, it says here that she's got two daughters and she had a young boy that died in infancy. She couldn't stand to see you suffering any longer, so she rushed in to smother the flames out from your face, and she put down her toddler in the middle of all this. I dream about her sometimes. It's the most wonderful dream. She sits down beside me at the garden. We laugh, and we, we play with uh, two little girls. You guys talk together? No, she just says one thing to me. She looks into my eyes. And she says, Sadaki. Friend? Friend. I think I'm gonna get us my champagne. I don't think I need any more. 
really? Oh, how often does this happen? <laughs> she's so happy you're here. You have no idea how long she's waiting for you. You know, she never forgave me for sneaking you out. And it seemed best at the time, but you know, her and father were already in prison, and I just thought it was the best way to keep you safe. Here you go. More bubbly. I'm giving him first. Chew your return. So, I have been speaking to the dean at the university, and she says that there is an opening position in the medical school in your area. That will be perfect for you. Maria. You are going to have a wealth of opportunity here. You can give back to your country. Maria. Lenny. Maria Louise. Maria. I know it's not an easy choice for you, but darling, Maria, I can't. You have a duty to your homeland. Think of how proud father will be. I mean, I would love to, but... That was father's, wasn't it? Wish you'd had a chance to know him better, Ellie. Oh, Maria. We never all had a fair chance like this to be together. It should never happen. Never. Never, don't start, never! Don't start this, Maria. Why did you do it, Lenny? You took my baby sister from me. Rip her from me. Maria. You know what the situation was. You know what the situation was. Don't start this. Not in front of Ellie. Maria, I have a life somewhere else. I can't just leave it. It's your fault, Lenny. You did this. Maria, stop it. I want you to come back with me. Oh, to that country? Oh, never. I'll never move there. It is evil. I will always stay here in my homeland. I love it. I, I support it. And it's me. And it's you, Eliana. Stop this, Maria. It's, it's your fault, Lenny. You traitor. Traitor, Eliana. You traitor. Stop it. You're completely out of control. Ellie, she put her heart and soul into this country, and huh? it's hard. Mm -hmm. She made it better, though, you know? Her poetry held her together and sustained her. She sustained all of us. I'm not one of those who left the land to the mercy of its enemies. I pity the exile's lot. Like a felon, like a man half dead. Dark is your path, wanderer. Wormwood infects your far and bread. But here, we the survivors do not flinch. We are the people without tears. Straighter than you and more proud. I am not one of those who left the land. Give me a one, give me a one. Come on, a one, that's all I need. Just roll, Dad. Give me a one, come on, please. Dad, roll. <laughs> okay, okay, pipe down. This is an important roll, all right. The game's on the line here, right, Darlene? Right, Mr. Perkins, whatever you say. Gotta build up some heat in these babies. Just roll, good grief. I'll take as long as I want. Fine. Not a one, not a one. Hey, stop that, what are you doing? You guys, come on, it's just a game. We're having a great evening. 
Let's just get on with it, okay? All right, all right, I'll roll. A one and a five! It worked, it worked, it worked! Shit. <laughs> now, as much as I hate you, I'll use the one to take you home. And this five. Oh, now, we're not going to flip over the board, are we? He's got this tendency all through childhood. He's a board flipper. <laughs> Just finish your move, Dad. Starling soon. Okay, okay. <laughs> Get him, darling. You need a four or a five. Both would be even better. Shall I pray? Just roll. Darn! Yes, oh yes. Oh, it feels so good. Victory! Thank you, darling. You've done a great service to humanity. I'll try not to hold it against you. <laughs> so what do I do now? Well, what do you mean, what do you do? You send him back. You move your piece forward. Send him back. Here, I'll do it. Uh, I'll move my own pieces. Thank you. I believe that it's within your right. Darlene's just learning, you know, Dad. Remember? This is her first game. Just trying to speed things along. Move your piece forward, honey. Which one? That one. <laughs> but I don't have to, do I? I can move this one four and move the other one three. Let's see. Six here. That puts one of your pieces back to start. Sorry, Mr. Perkins. Um, let's see. Where was I? That gives me another 20 to play with. Plus the two and the six on the other side. One, two, three. Oh, and that sends poor Mr. Perkins back to start again. <laughs> Gives me another 20. That's 42 altogether. Yes, this is working out quite well. Now, I wonder if I should leave this piece here just to keep it interesting. You are dangerously close. You told me you didn't know how to play Parcheesi. Where did you learn? No, I don't think so. Better move this one along. Where did you learn? Wasn't well, it interesting? I learned from watching you two. Oh, oh yeah? Well, I quit. <laughs> Why is it that Parcheesi always brings out the worst in people? I don't have any idea. But if I did, Darlene, I wouldn't want to play anymore. Why is that? It would take all the fun out of it! <laughs> <laughs> Hello again. This is Chris Bear with KFB Television. We are in Cleveland, Ohio at the home of Jane Rogers. We are with four honored American war veterans of the Iraq War, including Jane. Would you please introduce yourselves and say where you're from? I'm Jane Rogers from Cleveland. Uh, Marshall Soto from Mount Rose, Colorado. Tess Barr from Elkhorn, Nevada. Barry Anderson from Williamson, West Virginia. They are sharing with us their experiences in Iraq and the unique decision they made together while they were there. Before you tell us about the pack, can you tell us a little bit more about your time in Iraq? Can you describe to us what it was like to go and raise into the neighborhoods of Baghdad? Well, we'd get these false leads about going in to raid a house. Yeah, false leads. They just weren't true. We didn't know. Yeah, we started making jokes about it. Every time we'd raid a house, we'd radio in. <laughs> Saying 32 Portland. Yeah, we found, found the weapons, weapons of mass destruction. destruction. Smash windows and break down doors. <laughs> All we found were a few scared little kids. A woman, or an old man. An old man let out this blood-curdling scream. Like he was really scared. Terrified. <laughs> Weren't you tracking down the enemy? You know, memories can linger. Uh, people you knew can haunt you like ghosts. We didn't know the language. We'd wreck their houses. A lot of times we didn't even find any guns or explosives. We weren't trained like we were CIA. You know, how to interrogate or like detectives. Yeah, this went on and on. Then about eight months into the tour of our duty, we decided to start talking about giving back. Giving back? <laughs> yeah. I think it was Barry, he says, you know, we should join the Peace Corps after this. <laughs> <laughs> he was sort of laughing about it. Oh, we all laughed. You have to understand we were really burning out. The fear coming off the Iraqis was palpable. We felt more and more like we were their enemies and not their friends. Yeah, at one point I was ordered to help with an interrogation. I was supposed to keep this Iraqi man standing. His nose was right up against a stone wall. He had trouble standing, but my sergeant in charge told me to keep him upright. I think the guy's leg was injured. Then the sergeant comes in and smashes him against the wall several times. 
After he leaves, I see there's blood pouring out from under the bag that's over his head, you know? Then the officer comes back in, and I'm whispering to the guy, urging him to get up. That's when I realized that I wasn't protecting us from him. I was protecting him from us. Tell us about the pact. It's simple. We just all agreed that we wanted to give back after our tour of duty was over. It's logical. Totally. The Peace Corps seemed like a good place to do it. it just help balance things out. The U.S. put billions into this war. You know how much money goes into Peace Corps each year? Its budget's a little over 300 million. You know what 300 million's equivalent to? What? What the U.S. spent going to see the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the pact. Do you know where you're going? Which countries? I'm going to Madagascar. Not with the Peace Corps, but with the United Nations Volunteers. You, Barry? I'm going to this little country between the Ukraine and Romania called the Republic of Moldova. I have a job with Vista Volunteers here in the U.S. And you, Marshall? I still got another year left at college. Um, majoring in engineering, focusing on small-scale water supplies. After that, I'm going to Latin America. What will you do in those places? Mostly listen. Water conservation. Ask questions. HIV AIDS awareness. Plant trees. <laughs> Teach math. Ecology. Small scale business. Help listen. a midwife. And listen. And listen. <laughs> Do what we can. Ask. How's the platoon? Ragged. War now. Bates is as gung-ho as ever. We lost Fisher a few days before I left. I heard. How are you? Good. Lonely. Ah. Uh, dreams. Last night I had the captured one. I dream I'm lost in the desert. I find a beautiful green garden. Funny, I can see it so vividly. The colors, the sparkle of the water in the pond. How's it gone? You know, with uh, not seeing. What do you think? Yeah. Tough. Do you want a drink? Sure. Can I help? No. I do fine. Listen, I have something for you. It's an article about the firefight and what happened. It appeared in the New York Times. There's a description of the rescue and an interview with the woman. I heard about it. I'd like to know more about the woman. I can read it to you. Thanks. It doesn't paint a very good picture of what we're doing over there. But the woman is described well. Tell me. What? Describe her. Her eyes pierce through you. They're hazel. She has the most intense gaze. It's disarming. Is she smiling? No. Perhaps frowning, suspicious. Says she's married and has two daughters. She had a boy who died in infancy. It says she couldn't bear to see you suffering. So she put down her toddler in order to rush in 
and smother the flames around your face. I dream about her. It's an amazing dream. She sits down beside me by the pond. We laugh together and play with her little girls. Do you talk together? No. Just one thing. She looks into my eyes and says, Siddiqui. Friend. Friend. Give me a one, give me a one, that's all I need is a one. Dad, just roll, please. Give me a one, come on, please. <laughs> Dad, roll. Okay, okay, pipe down, the game's on the line here. Right, darling? Right, Mr. Perkins, whatever you say. Gotta build up a little heat in these babies before I... <laughs> Dad, just whoa, whoa, roll, whoa. good grief. Whoa, whoa. Hey, stop that. What are you doing? Hey, it's just a game. Come on, let's just get on with the game. We're supposed to be having fun. Come on. <laughs> just, just roll. Oh, all right, okay. all right, I'll roll. <sighs> a one and a five. It worked. It worked. It worked. Oh, shit. Oh, as much as I hate to, I can use the one to send you home and the pot. Oh, we're not going to flip the board over, are we? He's got that tendency all through childhood. He's a board flipper. Finish your move, Dad. It's uh, Darlene's turn. Okay. 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 All right. Get him, Darlene. You need a four or a five. Both would be even better. Shall I pray? Just roll, Darlene. It's on! Oh, yeah! Victory! It feels good. Uh, thank you, Darlene. You have done a great service to humanity. Uh -huh. I'll try not to hold it against you. Right. Oh, so what should I do now? What you do now is you send him back. You move your guy four and you send him back. Here, I'll do it. Hey, I'm with my own pieces, thank you very much. I believe you have the right. Oh, Darlene's just learning, remember, Dad? This is her first game. I'm just trying to keep things moving along. <clears throat> so, uh, move the piece uh, four, honey. Which one? Um, that one. Yeah, but I don't have to, do I? See, I could move the other four and the other three. Let's see, six here. That puts one of your pieces back to start. Sorry, Mr. Perkins. Now let's see. That gives me another 20 to play with. In addition to the other six, and the two on the other side, that's 42 altogether. Um, let's see. Um, I think I'll, move this little, I'll leave this little piece here. Mm, you're dangerously close. You told me you didn't know how to Play part cheesy. Where did you learn? Nah, I think I'll just move it along. Where do you learn? Wasn't it funny? I learned from watching you two. Oh, yeah. Well, I quit. <laughs> Isn't it funny how part cheesy brings out the worst in everyone? I don't have any idea, Darlene, but if I did, I don't think I'd want to play. Why is that? It takes all the fun out of it. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Hello again, this is Christy Bear with KFB Television. We are in Cleveland, Ohio, at the home of Jane Rogers. We are with three honored American war veterans of the Iraq War, including Jane. Would you please introduce yourself and say where you're from? Jane Rogers from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Marshall Soto from Mount Rose, Colorado. Barry Anderson from Williamson, West Virginia. They are sharing with us their experiences in Iraq 
a unique decision they made together. A kind of pact, I guess, while they're there. Before you tell us about the pact, can you tell us a little bit more about your time in Iraq? Can you describe to us what it was like to go on raids into the neighborhoods of Baghdad? Well, we get these false leads about going into a raid in the house. Yeah, false leads. Uh -huh. They were just not true, but we didn't know. Yeah, we used to laugh about it. Every time we get radio in, we radio in saying, 230 Portland, we found, found the weapons of mass destruction. Smash windows and break down doors. No, All we'd find was a few little kids. And a woman or an old man. An old man. Like that was blood curdling scream. Like he was really scared. Terrified. Ah! Weren't you tracking down the enemy? You know, memories can linger. People you knew can follow you around like ghosts. We didn't know the language. All we would do is, you know, every time, we would just find a... F we wouldn't even find guns or explosives. It's not like we were trained like we were CIA or detectives. We didn't know how to interrogate. This went on and on. Then about eight months into our tour, we started talking about, you know, giving back. <laughs> Giving back? Yeah, I think it was, uh, it was Barry. He says, you know what? As soon as we're done here, we should join the Peace Corps. Yeah. He was sort of laughing about it. Well, we all laughed about it. You have to understand. We are really burning out. The fear from coming from the Iraqis was palpable. We are feeling more and more like they were our enemies. <laughs> and less like they were our friends. At one point, I was ordered to help out with an interrogation. I was ordered to keep this Iraqi man standing. My sergeant, he had to stand right up against a stone wall. He, um, he had trouble standing. I think his leg was injured. Then when my officer came in, he started smashing. Smashing the guy's face into the wall. Again, and again, and again! Then when he was done, all you could see was just the, the blood pouring out from underneath the bag. You know, the one that was over his head. I just, then when the officer came in, I could just whisper to the guy, get up. God damn it, get up! <coughs> That's when I realized <coughs> I wasn't protecting us from him. I was protecting him from us. Tell us about the pack. It's simple, really. We just decided we wanted to get back when our tour was over. It's logical. Totally. You, the U.S. puts billions into this war. You know how much they put into the Peace Corps each year? <laughs> it's budgets are over 300 million. You know what 300 million is equivalent to? What? The U.S. spent going to the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the pact. Do you know where you're going? Which countries? Yeah. I'm going to Madagascar. Not with the Peace Corps, but with the United Nations volunteers. You, Barry? I'm going to this little country between the Ukraine and Romania. It's called the Republic of Moldova. And you, Marshall? I still got another year left at college. I'm, uh... Majoring in engineering, focusing on small water, uh, small scale water supplies. After that, I'm going to uh, Latin America. What will you do in those places? Mostly listen, ask questions, water conservation, give back, take trees, listen, ask questions, teach math, help out, HIV and AIDS awareness. We're going to plant some trees. Lots of trees. A ask lot questions. of them. Oh my god, my <laughs> eyes! I just oh, wanted up your nose. Yeah. Oh, I really thought I was choking on my breathing. Smiley, guys. Come here. Sit on the couch. Sit on the couch. Whoa! Can someone grab my phone and take a picture? <laughs> it's really slippery. It's right over there on the sofa. Come on in here.
<laughs> <laughs> oh, this is ripped. Oh, 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 